So the winter window is over. It's closed. It's time we rank every single League One club's January transfer window. Let's go. Before we start, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. We're trying to grow and expand the audience in different ways. I can tell you over 60% of the people that watch the podcast haven't yet subscribed. If that's one of you, please make sure you change that. Let's begin by introducing the tiers. As you can see on the screen now, all 24 League One clubs below our tier list, our first tier, the bottom tier, did it even open? Not ideal above that, then solid, always stronger, and window winner. As we progress through the video, I'm going to put a few teams in that top tier. They're not necessarily the winner, but there's a few candidates in there because, surprise, surprise, no spoilers, but a lot of teams have strengthened over this January window. And then by the end of it, we'll be able to give you one winner. But there's going to be a few candidates in that top tier because, like I said, a few teams have been extremely aggressive through the month. Let's begin with the first club. Burton Albion. Of course, a lot of this video is opinion based and in the comment section down below, I imagine there'll be plenty of debate and conversation, which is exactly what we're after. I have created a three point criteria for myself to help decide whether or not a team's had a good, decent or bad transfer window. The first one is, is the squad stronger on February the 2nd? The next point is, have a or multiple key figures left during this January window and how much of an impact will that have going forward? And the final point is, were all positions sorted? Were they all recruited? And are there any gaps following the conclusion of the month? That's what I've tried to go by. Of course, there'll be a few bits and pieces that we'll discuss as it comes through because there's a few asterisks, if you like. But again, we'll come to that when we need to. As for Burton, is their squad stronger? I think it is. I think their squad is stronger following the window. Have they lost any key players? I wouldn't say so. Barr was recorded by Watford. He did show glimpses of quality, but in terms of a huge departure, that wasn't really up there. Of course, Josh Gordon, Cole Stockton left, but they have not made an impact after joining in the summer, so not many Burton fans are worried about that. They haven't made an impact to that forward line. Instead, they've gone down a much younger route, and they brought in some young players from some top clubs. Manchester United, Joe Hugel already made an impact in that game against Derby County. That's the one that stands out. I'm not going to pretend I know too much about the others. Hackford are known from Sheffield United. There is a risk involved, first loans, even second loans. You don't quite know what you're going to get. Players like Hudlin uh, on loan from Huddersfield, he's an absolute giant. It's be interesting to see how they use him. I can sort of, I can feel Adeyomi, who's a bit more of a, a pacey, but also quite a physical striker as well. They've got a lot of interesting forward options. I imagine they're going to move to two up front because they've got plenty of strikers with very, very different attributes and profiles about them. So lots of, of different elements for Patterson to bed in and decide how he's going to get the most out of this revamped squad. For me though, I think Burton, they leave the window in a much stronger position and for that reason, I think Burton oh, they're stronger. Next up, Cheltenham Town. I think Daryl Clark was very, very open about what he wanted. He wanted a bit more EFL experience in that team. A lot of loanees went back. I wouldn't say they were key players. They did not make an impact. A lot of them did not ever hit the ground running whatsoever. So you look at their departures, quite a few Premier League loans returned to their clubs. It didn't work out at Cheltenham. It was probably one of the worst teams to use the loan market in the summer. A lot of them were recalled because they just weren't fitting into Daryl Clark's future going forward. And I look at their squad. Is it better? I think it probably is. I think there's much more of a Daryl Clark feel about it. They did lose a player in Will Goodwin to Oxford United. I do have a slight concern over it. I think Gab said it on Twitter after Matty Taylor signed. Uh, have they gone like for like in terms of a profile of striker? I don't think they have. It looks as though Rob Street's going to be out for the rest of the season. Will Goodwin, of course, departed during the window. Couldn't do too much about Rob Street, let's be honest. But they haven't necessarily replaced those with the same physical over six foot back to goal type of profiling striker so for that reason I'm a little bit confused I imagine Daryl Clark's got a plan that we haven't thought of yet he's that type of manager and so far has made a great impact at Cheltenham and these players have been recruited a lot of them are great you know I know Tom Pett didn't join uh, specifically during this window just before it but already his impact has been has been fantastic so you trust that uh, Daryl Clark knows what he's doing when it comes to recruitment I'm not going to go too harsh on it uh, but you look at Jordan uh, Jordan Thomas he's a young player from Bath again not don't know too much about him, but I believe he's being brought in as this long-term potential uh, type of striker being bedded in with the more experienced options. I'll be interested to see how it works out. I imagine, like I say, Daryl Clark is a very switched-on intelligent coach that's doing great things at Cheltenham already. He'll have a plan. I think it's solid. The departure of Will Goodwin makes it probably just outside the old way stronger. I think they are stronger, but not significantly stronger. I think I'm going to put them in the solid tier. 
For Cambridge, you could probably guess their manager just through their January recruitment. Very, very distinctive and probably a very clear indication of exactly the way that Neil Harris wants his Cambridge side to operate in the second half of the season. Lyle Ted has joined on a free transfer following the contract that expired at Wickham. It was a very short-term deal. I believe Lyle Taylor was uh, on trial with Gillingham where Neil Harris was before he joined Cambridge. He then, Lyle Taylor, joined Wickham instead of Gillingham. They're now reunited in January and already made an impact, you should say. I mean, against Fleetwood, he, he scored. But again, hasn't got an amazing prolific record in recent years at this level, but always somebody who's going to cause a nuisance. He's a back-to-goal type of striker. His best years, of course, were at Charlton. But we're speaking about a player that is always going to be a problem for defenders. He's that physical, well-built, tall, direct, driven kind of kind of operator. And that's the, what Cambridge are looking to do. McKeeley Bond as well has joined a loan from Gillingham. Again, not a great record in recent years when it comes to goals, but you trust that Neil Harris knows what he's doing with this one. Another striker. They've had a lot of injuries in the top and forward areas of the pitch. So to get that one done, it gives them two good options in there. James Gibbons has joined a loan from Bristol Rose as well. Not much game time for him so far this season. Gives them cover behind Bennett at right back. No interesting or significant departures to note. So when you look at key figures leaving the club, they're absolutely fine on that front. For Cambridge, I think it's another solid January transfer window for them. For Fleetwood, you've got to delve a little bit deeper and understand the context behind their window because on the eye, it is a little bit concerning when you scroll down to the departures. Scott Robertson was never really given an opportunity. He's joined Notts County, but Josh Earl, of course, is a key figure within this football club at 25 years of age. He's joined Barnsley, divisional rivals Barnsley, of course. Jack Marriott, who scored a lot of goals at this level, has joined Wrexham in League Two. Josh Vella, their captain, has joined Carlisle, another divisional rival. We're speaking about players that have played a lot of games and do hold a lot of experience experience within this Fleetwood side and, and they've left the football club. On face value, there's a lot of problem there, but they've recruited in a way that's sensible and they've got rid of players that they don't believe are going to be here next season. And it's quite harsh to speak about sides getting relegated in, in February, but Fleetwood understand the position they're in and they understand they have to be sensible financially when they drop down to League Two. And you rather get those players off the wage bill now, save the money now and be able to reinvest it going forward. They've been very, very active in the loan market. Gavin, um, Gavin Kilkenny is a really good player from Bournemouth. I think he probably could have looked at, at being loaned out at a higher league position uh, than, than the bottom of, of League One. Harry Boys at Sheffield United um, has already been here for, for a little while. He was at Wickham for the first half of the season. Elijah Campbell's a young centre-back from, from Everton. Again, there's risk with these. They might not be good enough. A lot of these are their first loans. So we were looking at players here that are, are hungry. And that's one thing you can guarantee with this talent. They are hungry to make an impact on that professional stage. They've used the uh, Irish market effectively, using their sister club, Waterford, in a sensible manner too. Look, I, I think... It's a case of waiting and seeing. If you look too heavily at the departures without understanding where Fleetwood are as a football club on and off the pitch, you can be misled. I think it's solid. I think it's sensible. If I could sort of rename that specifically for Fleetwood, I'd say it's a sensible window. So I'm going to put them there. Some people put not ideal. Some might even say it's a horrific window. But understand the context, Fleetwood. They have to be sensible. And I'm going to put them in that middle tier there. For Oxford United, six new faces joined during January, two deadline day signings of Owen Dale and of course Jay Matete. Six new faces though and I am extremely happy with the window. Let's break it down first and foremost by asking the question, is our squad stronger than when the window opened? I think it is. Did we lose some faces? A few were recalled in the early parts of January. James Beadle returned to Brighton, then went back out on loan to Sheffield Wednesday. Stanley Mills was injured at the start of January, was recalled. Uh, again, can't really blame Oxford for that. That was a, a freak injury. I don't think the intention for Everton was to recall him. So that injury was a massive part of, of why we lost him. In terms of the players coming in, Will Goodwin signed on a permanent deal from Cheltenham Town. Carl Edwards also joined. Owen Dale, Tyler Bureau, Jamie Cumming replaced. James Beadle and Jamie Matete. Of course, Joe Bennett didn't didn't count as part of the six new faces, but we did sign him and extend his contract. In terms of the, the profile that we brought in, they're very Des Buckingham signings, especially the wingers, Tyler Bury, Owen Dale, Carl Edwards. These are some really exciting uh, wingers and wide players that we hope can impact Oxford in the second half of the season. And like I always say, increase that quality and depth. Jay Matete is a profile of midfielder we've been missing for a, such a long time. I was delighted for that one to get over the line. And Will Goodwin is a different kind of striker too. A tall, physical striker that's in great form. Disappointed he's come with an injury. Hopefully he's not too far away. Oxford, though, on the whole, I think we're stronger. We probably could be a window winner candidate. 
I don't think they're going to win it, so I'm probably not going to put us up there for the sake of it. I think we're probably at the top end of this second tier here. We've definitely recruited, we've definitely strengthened, and our squad does look better. And we've signed a midfielder, which is a massive, massive bonus for us because that position has been very, very bare, or that type of position has been bare for a long, long time. Wickham are up next, and I think Wickham have had a very strong window. I think Bloomfield has been backed by the owners. Is their squad stronger? Yes, it is. Have they lost any key players? No, they haven't. Are there any gaps? Definitely not glaring gaps. Definitely not any glaring holes. I think they've recruited very, very well. They're not in a very good lead position, and we expect Wickham to be higher. They have had injuries, and I think they've replaced those players that are injured well, but they've also added some brilliant depth and quality. Matt Butcher from Plymouth, Lubala from Burton. The centre-back position has been strengthened. Lyle Taylor left the football club, but they weren't too worried about that. Instead, they brought in a younger option up front uh, from uh, West Ham in, in, in Kadua. Again, we don't know too much about him, but he's someone that I think is going to come in and provide a different type of option, and they do need goals. That is an area they're, they're concerned with at the moment, and they have gone on, clearly, to recruit in that position effectively. I think Wickham have had a very, very impressive window. Like I said, Bloomfield now has got a squad that should be doing better than, than their league position suggests, and injuries have affected that first half of the season so let's wait and see but a very competitive squad heavily backed let's see what happens I don't think they're going to win the window but they're definitely a candidate for me I've been very impressed by Wickham bringing in that different type of profile that Bloomfield wants moving away from the old Gareth Ainsworth Wickham era with some slightly different options and I've been impressed for me they're a candidate probably won't win it but they're a candidate for sure Let's chat Barnsley next, currently in the top six, fifth spot in Skybet League One, following the conclusion of the January transfer window. How have they got on? I think the position that was very clearly needed was the centre-back, and they have done that with Josh Earle, who was a left-back, but let's be honest, will probably play as a left centre-back. Donovan Pines joined early on in the window from DC United. He's been injured since he's come in, hasn't been given the opportunity, but they have brought in two players that can play in that defensive spot. They kept hold of James McAtee, Herbie Kane, Adam Phillips, that midfield that has been operating very, very well in the first half of the season. They have retained well. Could they have done better with players coming in? In terms of the quality that they have brought in, they're fine. They're very, very good players. Not so much do I know about Jonathan Pines. Uh, Donovan Pines, I think he's one that we'll all wait and see just how good he's going to be. Josh Earl, we've seen in League One and the Championship for a while. Fleetwood fans liked him. And as a left centre-back, I think with better players, could be even better than what we've seen at his previous club. Could they have done a bit more? Could they have reinforced and added options in the in the more attacking positions? Potentially, I think that's probably the biggest frustration is that general depth hasn't quite been strengthened. A few injuries have Barnsley and this window could be looked at very differently. We won't look at that too much because we're looking at this window in isolation and to an extent. Um, but I do understand the frustration. A few injuries in, in this window does look at in a more negative light for sure. Callum Styles left for Sunderland on deadline day. Not much concern there because that bloke is always leaving on loan. I believe it's an option to buy as well, which is even more frustrating for Barnsley fans because there's always a loan with an option. The teams never sort of take up that option. He is a 23-year-old, but it feels like he's been around for a long, long time. Always been loaned out away from Barnsley. Hasn't been great, really, in the first half of the season for them at this level. Um, Jack Shepard's joined divisional rivals, Cheltenham. But other than that, we're talking about players that have not left through any concern. Players coming in. Like I say, they're good players. Could they have done a little bit better with their depth? Possibly. So I'll probably end up putting them in solid. I can understand why quite a few Barnsley fans won't agree with that and, and might put them in not ideal. In fact, I could change. I haven't really thought about this too much. I'm, I'm trying to get a raw feel to it after discussing the points. I can see why there's concern because that general depth isn't very good improved i think the center back position has been strengthened but other than that you're looking at quite a few positions that a few injuries and, and they're looking very very bare it's probably not ideal it's probably not ideal i think it could have been better it's definitely not the bottom tier it's definitely not one of the worst teams in not ideal it's probably the top end of that bottom end of solid i can see frustration but the quality that they have recruited i think is still strong 
Blackpool are up next, one of a few sides very active on deadline day. Ryan Finnegan joined from Southampton, Dan Sassi joined from Burnley, Hayden Colson joined, the left back on loan from Middlesbrough, but George Byers on loan from Sheffield Wednesday, that's the standout. We saw how good he was in League One last season with Sheffield Wednesday, in fact we saw how poor Sheffield Wednesday were when George Byers wasn't in the team. He was a fan favourite at Wednesday, clearly not going to be part of the plans or wasn't part of the plans in the second half of the campaign, hence why made this drop down to League One. He is proven. He's 27. He's a very, very good signing. Could they have done with another striker? Maybe Jordan Rhodes. I know Joseph's getting fitter and better every single week. Behind that, could they have done with somebody else? Maybe I'm reading into that too much. I look at the midfield. It's been strengthened. I look at the, the defence. Generally, it has been strengthened well. Up front is the only area I think they could have maybe done with one more body. In terms of players leaving, Owen Dale's the only one they got a really good fee for. He joined Oxford United, of course. Kenny Dougal, they've been part of Blackpool for a long time. He joined... Um, where is that? Where has he joined? That is really embarrassing. I don't know the club he's joined. A Thai club, it seems, um, on an underclosed fee. He has not made the impact this season as he has done for Blackpool in the last couple of years. Other than that, no real departures to note. I think Blackpool have had a solid window. Striker, the only reason why I wouldn't put them in that tier above there. Bolton are next and they've had a very good window. It's very clear to see that Bolton don't want to be in League One for much longer and they're aggressive very, very promising window does show that. Aaron Collins joined from Bristol Rovers. Not been fantastic in League One this season, but was the best player in the league, according to the Football League. Definitely one of the best. I know that award was maybe not as accurate as some people would suggest. He was still phenomenal last season and did officially win the player of the season. It's some signing at 26 years of age. Ogbeet has already made an impact on loan from Swansea City. Calvin Ramsey's joined on loan, the right back from Liverpool. Last time Bolton got a full back from Liverpool, it was pretty good, especially a right back. He's now making an impact in the Premier League. If Calvin Ramsey can be anything like Connor Bradley was, that's another fantastic loan signing from the Premier League. Celeb Taylor's joined as well from West Brom. And again, we're speaking about a position in the centre back. I, sort of, I think I put a poll out on Twitter in the early parts of the win early parts of deadline day, sort of saying, right, if there's one position, Bolton is still looking at what is it. I believe Tal's going to come straight back in. Ricardo Santos could be out for a few more weeks. The centre back position was slightly weaker. The aggressive Celeb Taylor on loan from West Brom, who was great for Cheltenham last season, is definitely player that can fit the bill I think they are a candidate for window winner a very strong candidate for window winner in terms of finding positions they need to strengthen and making sure they go and get the best person on their list they've done that and they've been a really really ambitious aggressive side during the month of January Bristol Rovers are our next talking point and let's come back to our criteria for Bristol Rovers because that could be a good way of deciding whether or not their window has been any good or not. Is their squad stronger? I think it probably is across the pitch. Aaron Collins is a huge loss. I know he hasn't been brilliant this season, but he's still someone that you'd rather have in your team than not. And we saw when he is firing and when he is at it, he is going to be a top, top player for Bolton. I do believe that. And for Bristol Rovers last season, he was on a different level. So it is a big loss. A striker probably still should be on the list. Chris Martin's been great beyond that. There isn't loads and loads of depth. Aaron Collins was playing as that striker. Could have played, played on the left and the right. He probably is going to be a striker for, for Ian Everett's side. I don't think they've done as well in that striker department as they could have done. I look at the players that have come in. That midfield has been strengthened. Camille Conte is a fantastic addition from Grimsby Town. Um, we know um, Brandon, also from Thailand with a brilliant second name that I'm not going to butcher, has joined on loan from Nottingham Forest. He's an attacking midfielder. Uh, Bagger, again, somebody who's very, very well respected at Ipswich, has joined on loan. That made up the incomings. I think they've definitely improved their midfield. At centre back, they've improved too. Have they improved their forward line? Not so much. Have they lost an important figure of that forward line? Yes, they have. I think it's still probably solid. I think their squad is probably stronger just about, but when you lose that type of player and don't necessarily replace them, it does leave you in a slightly weaker position in that department. I think it's solid. I don't think it's not ideal. I think it's probably solid. Let me know, Bristol Rovers fans. Quite difficult to, to say there. The Camo Conte signing is so, so good. Hence why I think solid, that could be the, the balancing out. That could be the reason why I've just tipped you over the edge and put you in that tier there.
Carlisle United are next. They've been busy. Their first window with new ownership. They've definitely recruited quite a few new faces. Is their depth stronger? Is their squad stronger? Probably. I think it probably is. We'll have to see what the quality of these new faces are going to bring. Have they gone quantity over quality? I said earlier in the season, they're probably going to bring in quite a few new faces. Luke Armstrong was joining before the window opened. I got a feeling when that happened, they're going to be very, very busy. They've got some burning pockets with money to splash. I don't know if they've looked at players that are going to keep them in League 1. Instead, looked at what players are going to rocket them out of League 2 when they do get relegated, if they get relegated. Moxon wasn't going to sign a new contract. He's joined Portsmouth. Great addition for them. We'll come on to that later. For Carlisle, though, a massive blow. I think there is generally quite a lot of respect there. He was a cracking player for Carlisle this season and in the season where they got promoted. It looks like he wasn't going to sign a new contract. Pompey sort of waited to see what he was going to do at this level. He's been fantastic. So, for that reason, I, you know, I look at that and I go, it's a blow, but financially it makes sense. Better than losing him on a free in the summer. A forward probably still needed to come in. I think there's a bit of frustration. I think it's Paul Simpson that said that they were looking at another striker, another forward player, and that didn't really come in. They did sign Georgie Kelly on a permanent deal and Luke Armstrong, both forwards. They are definitely options. They're both 27. They're both going to be here next season and ready to sort of push them up. If you look at players, they've definitely gone down the permanent route. Luke Armstrong, Neil, Lewis, Josh Vela from Fleetwood, Georgie Kelly just mentioned there. These are players that have joined on a permanent deal. So they are looking at next season. They're looking at building this squad ready to give League 2 a really good go if they don't stay up this season, which is promising. They've got a few players on loan. Jack Diamond's joined from Sunderland on a loan transfer with Sean Grian from Palace 2. Other than Moxon, not a huge frustration with players leaving the football club. Joe Garner's a, a bit of a veteran. He's joined Oldham. Other than knowing Moxon, though, departures, definitely the, the secondary to the additions. They've made quite a few. Is their squad stronger? It probably is. I think it's solid. I think it probably is solid. It's definitely the bottom end of that. We've got to see what these players are going to do. Are they just sort of here uh, to make up, not make up numbers, but are they being recruited to increase depth but they're here to increase quality and depth we'll have to wait and see i'll put them in solid they might move down later on but i'm going to keep them in there for now charlton have been busy during the window with a manager and without one in the end they brought in quite a few new faces is their squad stronger i think it definitely is their squad is in a better place did they lose anyone of note of course Corey blackett taylor joined derby county on a loan, but it's a decent loan fee. He'll join permanently. He won't be returning to Charlton. That is a big loss, but they have, I think, improved in different areas, and you'd like to think they've reinvested that money in some of those permanent signings that have joined. In terms of gaps, a manager is a pretty big gap, and that's sort of where my concern lies slightly. How is a new manager going to inherit a squad that he hasn't played a massive role in building? We'll have to wait and see. Maybe Nathan Jones, who is the rumour replacement for Michael Appleton, has he been suggesting players? We don't quite know what happens behind the scenes. I don't think he has. I imagine it was being led by Andy Scott, the director of football, or the sporting director, who's involved in the, in the recruitment of the manager and the players. Conor Coventry, though, a top player. Decent fee, but a very, very good player at this level. Um... Lewis Ward, probably going to be a backup goalkeeper. But other than that, every other signing improves this team. Edmonds Green is one that stands out for me from Huddersfield. He was great in League One quite a few years ago. Kane Ramsey's been great for Harrogate in League Two. Ladapo is a proven striker at this level. We're talking about players that, on the eye, look fantastic. And just on, on paper, rather, they look like a really, really good set of additions. We have to wait and see how they're going to work within a new manager and a manager that hasn't been leading this recruitment strategy. But we're looking at this window as a whole. Their squad is much, much better. Has there been a clear plan? We won't know. We, we like to think so, but we won't know until that manager comes in and inherits this group of players. I still think they're stronger, though. I think they are stronger. I know Jake's got his thoughts on this, and we spoke about it on the Deadline Day stream. Jake doesn't quite think their window is as good as it seems. I think it is. I think it's a very, very good window. But I understand the frustration that it is being led by someone that isn't actually in the door yet. So let's wait and see on that front. I think they are stronger, though. I think they are stronger. Maybe I'll put, I'll put them in solid because they haven't got a manager. And the, the long-term future of this squad that's being built is intriguing. 
And look, Charlton haven't got a great track record over the past couple of years of recruiting and then building something special, let's be honest with that. But it is promising again, which is probably bringing back some horrible deja vu for Charlton fans. I think solid is where I'm going to put them. But if it works out, the players they brought in, they could easily be moved into that top tier. But I'm going to put them in there for now. Exeter are up next and I like their window. I do like their window. In terms of the criteria, is their squad stronger? Yes, it is. Have they lost any players of significance? Ryan Trevitt was recalled by Brentford in the early part of the window, but he was injured. So, not in their control. And general gaps? I don't think so. Not glaring ones. Maybe a striker, but Moisa was recruited. I don't think they could have done much better. I really don't. I've been impressed by Exeter. They said in a statement when Gary Colwell went on that terrible losing run, and it has improved since then, that they're going to back him in January, they're not going to sack him, and they're going to be aggressive in the way they approach their window. I said that's risky, very risky, especially because he could, things could get worse on the pitch, but also you could start bringing in players that don't fit another manager if it does come to the point where you've got to get rid of him. And it has improved, which is a massive bonus. And I actually think their window has been really, really promising. Ben Purrington's played at this level before. Charlie Cummings is a young player from Ireland. Again, they're looking at promoting the youth as well as bringing in the experience of Moisa Ryan Woods. Luke Harris is a young player from Fulham. Ali, I've heard good things from Halifax. He's still quite raw, I think. But in terms of his technical ability and that raw ability, he could be a game changer. At 23, he's now got that chance in the Football League to, to make a stamp and, and make an impact. I've been impressed. Like I said, no significant departures in their control. Is their squad better? Yes. Have things improved? Absolutely on the pitch, just through January itself anyway. I think it's uh, always stronger. I really do. I've been impressed by Exeter. I think Exeter fans are encouraged by January. I think they're stronger, definitely. Leighton Orient are up next. And look, again, I've been impressed by their transfer window. They have been good in the low market, but two permanent deals, Ollie O'Neill from Fulham. Geographically, that does make sense being London-based, but we're speaking about a player, 21-year-old winger at Fulham that's joined on a permanent deal. Very, very excited to see how he develops at Leighton Orient. They've got a great track record of bringing in young players and improving them. Brandon Cooper was on loan. That's now permanent from Swansea, a good centre-back, and again, keeps that stability and that sustainability going forward, knowing the player and being able to recruit him in a very, very competitive window in a seller's market, that has to be said. Two low needs on deadline day, Kyan Edwards, we spoke about him on the video at the start of the window, talking about one player everybody should sign. I think I put him forward for a Burton, maybe. If I didn't, I apologise, he was definitely in the video. He's a very, very promising player at Arsenal, somebody who they value very highly. A great finisher, very, very quick, a, a really quite exciting prospect that Arsenal believe is ready to make a, an impact on the professional stage. It is a first loan, to so be intriguing to see how he does. But if he can continue that fine form he's been doing in the Premier League too and at youth stage across his younger age groups, it could be a really good opportunity for Leighton Orient to see what he's all about. I don't know too much about the other lad from Bournemouth, so I can't comment on that, but you trust that later tonight know what they're doing when dipping into the under-21 Premier League market. I think it's been very solid. Do later tonight need to do loads of business? Similar to quite a few teams. I don't think they do. They're in a great place. They're not safe, for sure, but I think they are very, very healthy in that, in that sense. I think they're in a really, really good spot, especially being a newly promoted side. They've been fantastic for large parts of the season. They picked up some great results during January too, maybe helped recruiting certain players and encouraging teams to send their players on loan or just encouraging players to join, really. They've been really good. So, departures, nothing to note. I think Nathan Orient, oh, they're stronger. Oh, they are stronger and they didn't need to go crazy. They needed to be sensible and they've been sensible and they've taken into consideration where they are as a football club at this moment in time and recruited accordingly. I think they're stronger, hence why I'm going to put them in that tier there. Lincoln City are up next. Let's take a look at our criteria and help us get a good idea of how this window panned out. Is their squad stronger? I think it is. Were there any significant departures? No. Gaps, striker was the big one going into the window. They sorted that very well. They've gone from having pretty much no one, no first team strikers, to having plenty of options in there. Uh, in terms of the wide areas, if we're being extra picky, they haven't got loads of players in, in those spots. So depth could be an issue there if there are more injuries. Lincoln have been very unlucky with injuries this season. But in terms of their one place, and that was striker, they needed some more output. They needed some more help in the forward areas. 
they've gone and done that. They've gone and done that well. Jack Molin, they knew, was joining. He, that was done, I think, in between the summer and January. That was a, a pre-arranged contract. He joined on a free. Conor McGrandles has rejoined on loan from Charles and definitely gives them an option when it comes to those midfield spots. Joe Taylor was a player that a lot of people were after. He was recalled by Luton, sent out to Lincoln now, already making an impact. He's quick. He wants to get in behind. He wants to run at players. When the output comes, he's going to be a top player. We believe that. And we saw that in glimpses in League Two this season, in that first half of the season, just how promising he can be. We're still waiting to see it at Lincoln. There are, again, glimpses of quality here and there. When the output comes, he'll be just as good as he was in the first half of the season. Definitely ready to make that step up. So, they have strengthened. Could they strengthen maybe an extra bit, potentially? I think as football fans, we're already looking at where teams can strengthen when necessarily it's not priority. But I think it has been... A, a pretty good window. Departure-wise, like I said, no real problem there. A few players left on a free transfer. A few players have been loaned out. But again, no no massive names. I think for Lincoln, it's been solid. I think it has been solid. They probably are stronger. A few positions maybe they could have done better with. But all in all, solid. Um, and the players they have recruited look already to making a, a good impact. Northampton are up next, and I think similar to Leighton Orient, it's about understanding where you currently are. They're not safe, there's no guarantee of that, but they've got themselves in a very, very healthy position. And maybe a position that in the summer, come January, they didn't expect to be there, which is great. And they're definitely deserving to be where they are. They've had a very, very good first half of the season. And for Northampton, it was about retaining, keeping hold of Bowie, keeping hold of Leonard. They've been fantastic in the early stages of the campaign. So keeping hold of those talents have been massive. They haven't been hugely active. Is their squad stronger? I think it's probably stronger just about. I don't think it's dramatically stronger. It's definitely not worse, definitely not weaker. So... That's definitely a bonus. Have they lost anyone of note? Not really. Of course, Max Thompson went back to Newcastle, but they've gone and got Louis Molder from Wolves, a straight swap when it comes to goalkeepers. They've got Tony Springer as a wide option for Norwich City on loan as well. They haven't been super ambitious. They haven't been super spendy, but they don't need to be, right? They're in a place where they're comfortable, where they are delighted to be, and they would have been in a much worse position if they'd lost players. And there's no guarantee that if you do lose players and you replace them, they're going to be as good as they were in the first half of the season. So they've been very, very sensible. They've managed to do what they expected to do in the window, and, and that's be, like Northampton have been through the summer as well, be very, very good transparent I think is the best way of putting it so Northampton I think they've had a solid window keeping hold of players have been massive and the players that they've recruited make sense and improve the team heading over to Pride Park next Derby County let's take a look at their transfer window Derby is their squad stronger I think it is I think it is in a better place have they lost any key players there was rumors of Max Bird leaving that hasn't gone through so no significant departures gaps Probably a striker short for me still. Probably a striker short. Lee Gregory was linked. Michael Smith was linked. Both from Sheffield Wednesday, of course. They looked like they were going to be loan deals. For some reason, those weren't progressing very quickly and they didn't happen. I think it was on Sheffield Wednesday's end, not so much Derby's end. I think they probably are a striker short. Their squad is good. Their squad is very, very good. Corey Blackett-Taylor on loan with an option, or I think it's a, well, it's a mandatory obligation to buy from Charlton, is a very, very good wide option. He's got that raw pace about him. He can run at players. He's that dynamic option that Paul Warren could use in a, in a quite exciting way, I think, going forward. Ebo Adams on loan from Cardiff gives them another option in central midfield. I think we thought that with him coming in, a midfielder would leave. Maybe that was the Max Bird replacement doesn't seem to be so they've got an extra midfielder in there definitely look fine in the center of the park and out wide now with Corey Blackett Taylor they've got a great player that's going to bring quality and like I say depth too no significant departures Embleton left in the middle of January he never really got well, a chance first and foremost but never really took it when it did come he wasn't a, a big issue when that news broke I think Derby they're stronger they're probably solid. The top end are solid. I think they, they're a striker short. They need a striker. I think with that, with the behind James Collins and, and sort of John Jules, I think he's injured at, at the moment too. Bark Husen can play up there. Mendes Lang's played up there this season. Look, they, they've got players that can do it, but if we're being extra picky, they probably should have got one more in. I think it's still solid. The players they've recruited make total sense. But one striker short. Let me know, Derby fans. Let me know. 
Peterborough United in a fantastic position currently in League One. Retaining players was on the agenda and they've done that. They've done that pretty well. I say pretty well. Of course, they have lost Mason Clark in the summer. They've done that deal, but he's been loaned back to Peterborough until the end of the season, which I imagine does... You know, that does upset supporters, even though you're going to see him to the end of the season. You know, that is something that isn't the future. And he has been great for Peterborough this season. And no surprise, him, Pocky, Ricky J. Jones, Edwards is always attracting attention. We're speaking about players that were always going to be linked with a move away. To only have one move away and have him loaned back, I think is pretty good going. Not because Peterborough don't have the ability to keep hold of these players, but it's pretty clear that it's about taking young players on, developing them, and then trying to you know, move up and sustainably run a football club in, in that manner. And Peterborough do a great job of doing that. In terms of players coming in, um, one loan, Jed Steer uh, joined, of course, as well as, as a goalkeeper. He rejoined, he left and then came back. So uh, quite a strange one, but he is returning to Peterborough United. Players leaving, Peter Caloso is, is frustrating. He's joined Rotherham, uh, or sorry, well, recalled by Rotherham. And of course, he's going to play a big part for them in the championship. He was a, a really good fullback for them. A little bit surprised that Peterborough didn't sign a fullback. I think they probably could have done with an extra player uh, at right back and, and maybe left back too. They, I think they think they probably are a fullback in both areas short sure. definitely one player they could have maybe got someone that could play both uh it's not it's not not ideal they've kept hold of their talents and that's what they needed to do and they've added a player that can come in and, and help that and almost allow those players to have a break because it's a very very demanding style of play that requires a lot of running a lot of working working hard at a strong pace i think it's solid i think it's solid they're not dramatically stronger they probably could have done with another fullback other than that i think it's solid from peterborough and like i said it's about making sure that those top talents don't leave now in the middle of what's been a really good start to the season andy crosby's port vale is up next and when assessing their window is their squad stronger i think it probably is They've got a very clear strategy, and that was use the loan market effectively. Jensen Weir's joined on loan uh, from Brighton. He was fantastic at this level with Morecambe last season. Didn't work out at Blackpool in the first half of the campaign, but Port Vale, all the chance of that working out. Reese Williams, that didn't work out. He signed on loan from Liverpool and has been recalled straight away because of an injury. Daniel Gore is incredible. Like He's a fantastic player that championship clubs, and I expected some top, top-end League One clubs were going to look at. I think Pompey... Fans were hoping they were going to get him as that Alex Robertson replacement. Of course, in the end, Miles Pitt Harris joined the club, so that wouldn't have been as bad. But Daniel Gore is a, a very, very exciting player. Manchester United fans are excited about him, and that says quite a lot about his ability. At only 19 years of age, he joined Port Vale, and I think he could make a, a really, really exciting impact if he finds some form. Definitely got a point to prove. First loan, I believe. So there's going to be a risk element to it but he's got all the ability in the world just ask Manchester United fans they're excited about him Alex Mighton don't play with wingers um, Andy Crosby too much his sides at Port Vale so far haven't done that so I'm quite confused about him somebody who at Sheffield Wednesday was on loan in the first half of the campaign they played wingers every now and again it, but, again, but again I'm looking at this Port Vale side they don't play the position that Alex Mighton has thrived in so Let's wait and see what his area looks like, if you like. And Lapata joined on loan from Barnsley as well. He's going to be an option at the back. They probably could do with an extra centre defender, and they have done that. So, yeah, interesting. Definitely interesting. Players leaving. Oliver Alblaster is the big name. He was great for them, picked up an injury, and has been recalled by Sheffield United. He was a really good player in the first half of the season. I think it's probably been solid. I think it's probably been solid. Wait and see. If these loan players don't make that step up effectively in their in their first year as a, as a professional footballer, then it looks a terrible window, doesn't it? But well, let's wait and see. On on the eye, positionally, Daniel Gore's a big reason why I think they're going to be going to be fine. I'm going to stick them in solid. Portsmouth are up next, and oh, did they sign some players? They were very, very aggressive. We've done a video on Callum Lang twice, actually, one before he signed, giving a review on the signing itself, but what you could expect from him going forward and how he fits into this Pompey team in the long term. Definitely go and check that out. And also, watching him in the flesh against Oxford on Tuesday, he came on and transformed that Pompey side. Go and watch both of those videos after this one if you want to learn more about Callum Lang and how Pompey are going to use him. But other than Callum Lang, they have signed a few others too that have been just as promising, 
just through announcements, let alone watching them on the field yet. Tom McIntyre joined from Reading, a centre-back that was much needed. We know that Sean Raggett in that game against Oxford, and we spoke about it in that reaction to it, he is not a comfortable centre-back on the ball in the way that John Messina wants his side to play. A ball-playing, comfortable, composed central defender is crucial. And Tom McIntyre joins from Reading, and he is exactly that. A very cheap fee too. They've done great business there. 25, plenty of years to grow. That could be an underrated signing of the of the window. He is that good and exactly what John Massino wants in a defender. Callum Lang, we've spoken about. We won't go into too much detail on that, but a really good attacking option on that right-hand side. Oh, Moxon is incredible and has been incredible for Carlisle. Again, another example of getting your top targets, waiting a little bit longer for a permanent deal. We know how these transfers work. Sometimes it's a domino effect. Sometimes it's about creating a, a bidding war, if you like, and there was going to be lots of interest in Oe Moxon. And of course, Pompey made sure they got it done in the end. Set 26 years of age, so you've got plenty of years ahead of him. Miles Pitt Harris joined on loan from Brentford, and we're already seeing that quality as a player replacing Alex Robertson as a different profile, but still somebody who's got an abundance of composure and talent, and you can just tell he's got that aura of somebody who's played at a higher level. Josh Martin signed a contract extension as a winger, probably a backup, let's be frank. And Matt Macy joined or rejoined the club on a free transfer to to help Norris out in the goalkeeping department. No surprise on Pompey's place. They're going to be definitely a candidate, candidate for window winner. We're going to uh, give our window winner out at the end, but no surprise. They're definitely in that top tier. For Shrewsbury, I'm not blown away by their window. In terms of their best piece of business they did in January, it was bringing Paul Hurst back to the football club. He has made an impact in his first game in charge against Northampton on the road. He could keep them up. Their signings probably won't. Look, they are in a position right now that is screaming a relegation battle. They're not in that bottom four, but for a long time they've been performing like one, but results, late winners and fine margins have meant that they're staying away from that from that area. They are in the conversation for relegation and their signings, they're not massively inspiring. They're not. There's been a lot of confusion over the direction of Shrewsbury in the last couple of seasons definitely this season of course when Cottrell left in the summer and this window with Mickey Moore as director of football it hasn't really got better a free transfer that I'm not going to pretend I know too much about from the Irish League and Jack Finchie on a loan deal from Brighton players that have left a few loanees Kieran Phillips Ryan Finnegan of course left Southampton it was said that was an injury but he's gone and joined Blackpool straight away on a permanent deal so I'm not quite sure how serious that injury was Shrewsbury fans didn't say that they pulled up any trees, but Blackpool clearly have rated him. And there is a feeling that he's a, a good player and has been a good player for Southampton under 21s for a while now. Didn't work out at Shrewsbury for whatever reason. Their signings, though, like I said, they're not blowing me away. And if we're looking purely on recruitment, did it even open? You know, Did that window ever open for Shrewsbury? Because a few late loanees, a few players no one's really ever heard of that could be great, but I say few, one player I, I don't know too much about. Uh, the central midfielder from from Waterford, they are leaving quite a few gaps. I mean, the striker position for one, they have not looked at that and they desperately need goals. They are lacking in the goal department dramatically and they haven't gone out and got a goal scorer of any kind, not even a potential goal scorer. They've looked at the midfield and that's about it. They haven't, they've got gaping holes still. Maybe the free agent department is going to save them, I don't know. But purely as of right now, did it even open? The first team in that bottom tier, unfortunately. At Stevenage, they've been sensible. They've been very, very sensible. Is their squad stronger? Yes, it is. Did they need to be breaking any piggy bank? No, they didn't. They're in a great, great place. And Steve Evans, he knows what he's doing. He's been in this business long enough to know that going into the window, they need to be sensible, get the targets, keep hold of players, and then just don't make a big noise about it. Just tickle and plod along nicely. Rodane Oliver joined on loan from Bradford City. The goalkeeper department was sorted out. A bit of a confusion over Aloni leaving, but a goalkeeper has been replaced. Nesta Guinness Walker has joined to help Butler out as a fullback on loan from Reading. But like I said, we're speaking about a player and a team that are coming in and helping out depth. And that's what you need to do. Players that are coming in to help the depth out. It's not super glamorous. It's not super flashy, but it's solid. It's very, very solid. It could even be always stronger. They haven't lost anyone, but I'd say they're, they're definitely in solid. Maybe even always stronger. They've had a very good window. I'm going to put them in there just because it's Steve Evans and I know that he knows what he's doing. So I'm 
for Steve and his fans, I can imagine you're pleased. I can imagine you are. You've been very, very good. You've been operating so well all season. And in the window, this time around, you've gone and said, right, we want him. We'll do that. It's not the most glamorous. It's not the most flashy. Not everybody's going to speak about it. But it's what we need. And normally, that method brings out great success in a football club. Stevenage, so far, has been great. They're setting up a really exciting second half of the campaign. The final team, Wigan Athletic. Interesting one with Wigan. Not overly busy. Luke Chambers joined on loan from Liverpool. Charlie Good is a really good centre-back. He's joined on loan from Brentford. Charlie Kelman has joined on loan from QPR. Not a prolific goal scorer in recent years, but again, somebody who's going to help out up there. Of course, Callum Lang left... Um, Charlie White joined Rotherham, reunited with Liam Richardson, so they needed an extra striker, and uh, Charlie Cowman joined the day before deadline day. No deadline day signings for Wigan. Callum Lang, the big departure, but other than that, again, sensible. Not breaking the bank, but for Wigan, that's what they need to do. They need to be very good and clever financially. They're still not opening up any financial issues once again, which is very, very important for them as a football club sustainably off the pitch. Look, I don't think they're going to go up. I don't think they're going to go down. They've been great this season at getting out of that points deduction issue that they started the campaign with. And they've come out of that now looking like a mid-table team. They're just behind the pack of that top six race and that top six conversation, which is fine. That is not what they expected to be at the start of the season. I think it's solid. I think it'd be harsh to put them in the tier below that. On the eye, is it blowing anyone away? Probably not. But again, it's about looking at where you are as a football club and maybe if there are finance, finances that can be used in the summer when that season is a fresh blank canvas, you can look at it differently. But in terms of players they've recruited, they definitely improved the squad. So there we have it then. Every single League One club's January transfer window ranked. The final tier list is on the screen now. Of course, you're saying, Jack, you haven't forgotten, have you? No, I haven't. Who is our window winner? It's not Wickham. I've liked Wickham. I really liked Wickham's window, but it's not them. It's between Bolton and Pompey, and it's very, very close. Closer than what people will say, because Bolton, they've been great understanding where they are, needed a centre-back, got a fantastic centre-back that every single League One club would want in Taylor. Aaron Collins is a phenomenal player proven at this level. They've used the low market effectively from the Premier League too, and the beta from Swans has already made a great impact. I'm going to edge Pompey. I am going to edge Pompey. I love Owen Moxon as a footballer. I think he's a great player. And when you look at what they need in the midfielder, they are missing that type of profile. Callum Lang is a great addition. Miles Pitt-Harris, by watching him, you can tell he is a very, very good footballer that's played at a good level. I'm going to edge Pompey. I am. But Bolton fans, don't think I'm not rating your window. I rate it extremely highly. In fact, I'm not going to move you down. I'm going to say that Pompey on are just about our window winner but Bolton their window deserves to see them in that top tier because they are one of two we can I say behind that pack window winners thank you very much for watching please make sure you leave a like and subscribe let me know of course your thoughts on your window down below I'll be replying and responding to all of those thoughts as per usual until next time I've been Jack this has been the Jack Wood Football Podcast and I will see you very very soon take care